Hello, everybody. This is the Catholic Esquire. Coming back to you again, please check out my website at catholicesquire.org. Also, please like and subscribe to the channel. That does help. Uh, especially helps for people like me who just set up a camera and a microphone and just talk a few minutes every week. That's not the case for other people who I consider or call professional athletes those who make a living off of talking about things relating to the Catholic Church. Perhaps they have certain topics they like to talk about. They get asked to participate in various conferences and events, um, and they do very well um, for themselves, certainly. And, and many times they do provide very good information out there, no question about it. Well, my concern is based on some of the events this week especially that confirmed my concern is that these people are not really cut out for the culture war we need to engage in i think everybody's different but generally speaking there's this post vatican ii um, modernist attitude out there that says that yes we can talk about the issues that are important to us maybe even some issues that are somewhat controversial, but at the end of the day, we have to try to get along with other people, try to get along with our enemies, not be overly uh, pushy about these things, make sure we don't say anything that offends too many people in an in offensive way, and make sure that, that those invites keep coming, that we keep getting invited to the parties and the financial stream coming in. And of course, we never, ever want to make a bishop upset with us by talking about controversial things. That's generally speaking, I think, the attitude of many of these professionals in the professional Catholic class, uh, especially over the past 30, 40 years. And the problem with that is, is that is not going to be helpful in the culture as far as winning a culture war. Because, see, what I'm interested in. And many of the people I know who are traditionalists, what we're interested in is actually changing the world, going out and defending Christ's social kingship out there in the world. And that means taking a lot of these ideas and principles that we know are true and then making our case out there to try to change things. And this week, Patrick Coffin, uh, you probably know about him. He used to be the host of Catholic Answers, a popular apologetic show on the internet and on the radio. Well, he's been on his own for a couple of years, and he's now put together this conference called Hope is Fuel. And he, like typically in these conferences, he invited many of these well-known names to come and speak on various topics. And they agreed to come. And, and talk about whatever they were going to talk about. Well, one of the speakers was Dr. E. Michael Jones. And he also is one of these uh, authors, uh, speakers, I believe makes a living doing it, talking about various things and writing about various topics. But one of the topics he often writes about is uh, Jewish uh, influence in political and global affairs. Uh, the history of that, uh, as well as in modern times. And the problem with that is that Dr. Jones has been labeled an anti-Semite because of it. And whether it's true or not, I personally don't think it is, but whether it's true or not, that's the impression that those who enforce woke, politically correct, cultural ideals like to uh, get across about Dr. Jones. Well, anyway, there's been apparently, according to Patrick Coffin himself, there was someone emailing other presenters at this Hope is Fuel conference, uh, bullying them and persuading them or encourage them in some way to drop off of the program and not be a speaker because Dr. Jones was an other speaker at the same conference. But keep in mind, they're not talking at the same time. They're not really on a panel, I don't think. It's, it's more of just being two different speakers in the same conference. Well, believe it or not, people, well-known 
speakers are dropping off. Possibly as a result of this pressure. Uh, they've given statements. Many of them come up with some excuses like, well, I didn't know Dr. Jones was on there before I agreed to do that. Had I known, none of the reasons are very good. It all boils down to, well, I don't agree with what Dr. Jones says, and therefore I don't want to be a speaker at this conference. Very weak. Well, anyway, some big names are dropping off. Uh, some of them are Jennifer Roback Morse, Janet Smith. Father Spitzer, all of these, all of these pretty well-known names, and they've all dropped out, all claiming to be offended by Dr. Jones. You know, this is very pathetic, and it's not going to help us in the culture wars. It's really not. This is not a matter of prudence. This is a matter of fortitude. Okay? And we need people that are willing to get up there and state the truth regardless of the pressure that's put upon them to not state the truth. I have no doubt that some of these speakers, like Dr. Janet Smith, would have made a good presentation. But by dropping off, who benefits from that? Nobody benefits from that except the bully, the bully, the blackmailer. They're the only ones that benefit by you caving into that. All you're doing is depriving those who would benefit from your talk and your information from that in you're depriving them of that information no one no one benefits so why are you doing this you know this really this is really just a you're insulting yourself and you're setting a bad example for leadership i mean it's honestly causing a level of scandal here because what's happening is, is now people who have a problem with what Catholics want to talk about and teach, i.e. the truth, what you're teaching the enemies of the church is that by engaging in these tactics, very minimal, strong iron tactics, at least in this case, you're teaching them that it works. You're teaching them that it pays benefits. That the enemies of the church can influence what happens in the church by simply putting a little cultural pressure on them. Accusing, accusing someone of being an anti-Semite or a racist or a bigot and homophobe. If you just do those simple things, you're going to be able to control these conferences and these efforts to change the culture. So what we really need, my friends, is a, a, an effort uh, among the grassroots of the faith, you know, people like me and you, the ones who are going out to work every day, the ones who interact with people out there, it really, at the end of the day, is our job to, to try to change the folk, folk culture, to, to defend Christ's social kingship out there. And I think what this week has taught us is that we cannot rely on the professional Catholic class, the ones who write all the books and make the videos, the ones with all the reach and the influence and the pull, it's going to come down to us because of this attitude of you know, conciliation with the world, this, this lack of fortitude that exists. It's sort of ingrained into us almost in this post-Vatican II culture in the church. It's almost ingrained into us that we have to be more worried about our image and our financial streams and what other people think about us. But what I have to tell you is, is that they're not, the world is not going to think very good things about us when we start teaching Catholic truth out there. But the last thing we should be doing is shutting our own mouths to keep the truth from getting out. If you find this video helpful, please like it and please subscribe to the channel. That's the way it, it helps um, you know, the people without all this reach and influence to at least get a message out there. I thank you for listening, and ha have a great day. God bless.